welcome back, or if you're new here, welcome aboard. My name is Stacy, and I love sharing my travel tips from destinations around the world. So if that interests you, consider subscribing and becoming part of our online travel family. Today, we're in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and this city is chock full of United States history, cheesesteaks, and brotherly love. This video is gonna be a little different than our previous vlog style videos where you follow us around minute by minute. I'm gonna break this video down into four categories. Food, attractions, places to stay, and transportation. I'm gonna show you some things to do as a first time tourist here in Philly, so come travel with me. Philadelphia has several transportation options, including a rail line that connects from the Philadelphia International Airport to the city center. From there, you can connect to another rail or trolley line to get to your destination. To use the public transport, you'll need to get a SEPTA card and load money onto it. We chose the key card, which is a contactless chip card, and we added a three-day unlimited ride pass onto it. You can get these cards at the ticket booths in most major stations. After you bought your card and loaded it with money, you just tap into the stall and it opens to get on the train. I wanted to mention this because it confused Jeff and I on the first day, but if you see lines for a trolley that are heading down into the subway, that is where you find the trolley. We are used to trolley lines that stay above ground but the trolley lines in Philadelphia go below ground and eventually do come up to the surface. I highly recommend downloading the City Mapper app on your phone because every time I use this app, I never seem to get lost, even if it's my first time visiting that city and using that subway station. You can download the SEPTA app or click the link in the description below to find stations with the key card buy and load kiosks. Of course, they also have Uber and Lyft. We didn't see any taxi services, but be sure to let us know in the comments below if you know of a taxi service in the city. So one suggestion for coffee would be a place called Ultimo. Um, this was one that we just kind of stumbled upon and they do have a couple of locations in the city, but we went to the one near Rittenhouse Square. Um, so they've just got really good selections of coffees, cappuccinos, they've got fresh uh, pastries. I know they usually will have donuts and stuff like that. Um, it's a very small coffee shop, but we like those kind of those mom and pop coffee shops when we can get them. Another cool coffee shop is called Vibrant. This is also down in the Rittenhouse Square area. Uh, it's a small coffee shop. They do have a little bit of seating, but they make their own breads. They have their own pastries that are so delicious. And then they do have your normal list of coffees and cold brews. They also can their own coffee, so be sure to take some to go if you're in the area. You definitely need to check out their mashup of a croissant and muffin, the Cruffin. We are at Jim's on South Street. We are finally having Philadelphia cheesesteak. Jim Steaks on South Street has been around since 1976 and was named in TripAdvisor's Best of the Best for 2021. Ordering a cheesesteak is easy. Just tell them what type of cheese and with or without onions. Jim's also serves hoagies, but my guess is that people really come for these delicious cheesesteaks prepared fresh as you order. Jim's does have a small seating area upstairs. Just go all the way to the back. Nope, not there. Turn left up the stairs and look out over South Street as you enjoy your meal. Now, when we talked to one of our waiters our first night here, I was talking to him about getting cheese whiz because I don't really like cheese whiz. And he said, yeah, I get that, but it really works on this sandwich. So he told me to get it with cheese whiz and just have faith. So I'm gonna try it with the cheese whiz and see if I like it or not. Mm. Yeah, I get what they mean now. The cheese whiz plays on this sandwich. 
And I think the cheese whiz gives this sandwich just like extra flavor and moisture so it doesn't end up being like a dry sandwich. But so if you come, you need to try it with cheese whiz. Even if you think that cheese whiz is a lesser cheese. And then tell me in the comments what you think about it. My next cheesesteak in the Smackdown is Ishka Bibbles. They opened in 1979 and their website says they are the home of the original chicken cheesesteak. But I'm going to save that for our next visit and stick with the traditional beef cheesesteak with, you guessed it, Cheese Whiz. Jeff has been here before and told me I also needed to try their specialty drink called the Gremlin. This is half grape juice and half lemonade. It looks crazy, but it tastes amazing. Okay, cheesesteak number two. We have got another cheesesteak with wind. This is so good. Jeff just told me to over here. We put the cheese whiz on top of the steak. But at Jim's where we were last night, they put the cheese sauce on the bread itself. So, a little different. The bread is softer. It's really good bread. It's really good steak. This is going to be controversial, I'm sure. One thing I do like about your schedules already, they have hot sauce. Normally, I eat a cheesesteak sandwich with provolone cheese. Frank's red hot sauce on it. That's just how I eat it, that's how I like it. I'm really happy that they have hot sauce here. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. 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 In my opinion, you need the hot sauce. The hot sauce makes it. Get the cheese whisk too. Put some hot sauce on it. Okay, the next place that I think is a must see when you come to Philadelphia is the Reading Market. This place has everything you need in it, whether you want to get groceries or flowers. There is so much to see here. Crepes, fresh seafood, an oyster bar, chicken and waffles. Chinese food, we've seen it all. Now, I'm gonna put a link in the description below because each vendor here kind of, it's like their own business and they have their own hour. So, if there's some place that you really want to come visit when you're here, check the description below to see what their hours and days of the week they work are because you don't want to show up and then they're closed that day. But yeah, definitely check this place out when you come. Uh, bring a, a empty stomach, and a full appetite. <laughs> Someone's waving at me. <laughs> Bring an empty stomach and your full appetite because you're gonna need it when you visit the Reading, it's Reading, not Reading, Market. We are staying in the Motto by Hilton in the Rittenhouse Square area. The downstairs bar and restaurant are so cute, but the showstopper here has to be the rooftop bar and patio. This area opens in the afternoons and has such yummy drinks and light snacks. We highly recommend getting the full salsa range to try because all of them were so delicious. The views are gorgeous and during good weather, this rooftop retracts to enjoy some sunshine. Okay, so let me take you in this room very quickly. So obviously when we come in, we've got some places to hold your stuff. The views aren't, you know, you're not getting some awesome views of the city, but that's okay. You're gonna be out in the city. You don't need beautiful views. These rooms are very practical. Uh, I think that's a great word for it. We've got a queen size bed. They only offer queen size beds. They do have some rooms with some bunk beds or twin beds. If you're here with a friend or maybe you've got kids, so that would be good. Um, but otherwise, it's a very standard room. Um, which I personally love. I don't need um, a very big, frilly, uh, luxurious room when I'm going to tour a city. I need practical things. I need a bed, I need lamp, I need a bathroom. Um, and so that's what you're getting. And that way you're not paying this high cost and spend that money on, you know, going to another museum or something. Uh, you do have a safe, you have a telephone, full length mirror, 
And then back here again, if you need some place to put your things, instead of having a traditional closet, you've got a little place to hang some clothes up and then you can put your bags here. Another cool feature is they have these Brita hydration stations outside some of the rooms. One thing Jeff and I have kind of decided that we wish this room did have is a place to put your luggage once it's open, like one of those little luggage racks. We're just gonna have to kind of open our luggage on the bed, get what we need out, and then probably just close the luggage back up. Maybe something to improve on in the future. There are so many things to see in Philadelphia that are just not to be missed. But one thing that you must see before you leave Philadelphia is Elfrith's Alley. This alley of row houses dates from the 17 and 1800s. They've even transformed one of the houses into its own museum that runs from April to October. So be sure to check it out if you're here during that time. Betsy Ross's house is also a museum that we didn't get to tour, but check it out when you visit to get some history on this iconic woman behind the American flag. Next up, we have Independence Hall. Formerly known as the Pennsylvania State House, this building is a big reason why history books say Philadelphia is the birthplace of America as we know it today. Centuries ago, a group of men debated and signed the Declaration of Independence in this very hall, essentially committing treason. Years later, this same site saw the formation and signing of the United States Constitution. They have some awesome tour guides here who help paint a good picture of life here in the 1700s. So be sure to take the time to get in on one when you visit. Across the street from Independence Hall, of course, is the Liberty Bell. Formerly known as the Pennsylvania State House Bell because it resided at the Pennsylvania State House, this bell used to ring to bring lawmakers into session. Throughout the years, the words written on the side of the bell became a ringing anthem for liberty movements such as women's suffrage or slavery abolition. Here you get to check out the bell up close and personal and learn that the large crack in the bell is actually a repair job on a hairline fracture. If you have a bit of extra time, take the trolley to 36 and check out the grounds at University of Pennsylvania. Founded in 1740, it is one of the only nine colonial colleges chartered before the Declaration of Independence and was founded by Benjamin Franklin. We visited to enjoy the colorful fall foliage, get a bit of fresh air amongst historic campus buildings, and to admire a few art installations, including the famous Love Installation by Robert Indiana. Finally, you absolutely must see the Benjamin Franklin Museum. While his house is no longer standing, they have built framing to show you where the home stood as well as where the foundation walls still reside. You can enter the museum via the courtyard building and get a glimpse into the full life of one of America's most famous forefathers. This museum is especially fun because a lot of it is interactive and unlike typical museums, touching the props is encouraged. I think this would be a good one for those with kids or those who love learning a bit about history. There's also a portion of the museum at the front that is dedicated to his printing press, and we definitely wanna check that out next time we are in town. Okay, so that is it. That is my full list of things to see and do and eat when you visit Philadelphia. I know for a fact there's at least a hundred other things that I could probably put on this list. In the meantime, why don't you put down in the comments some of your favorite things to do when you come to Philadelphia. If you like this video, be sure to like it and share it with your friends. I would love for you to subscribe and become part of our online travel family. Until the next trip, we'll see you later. Bye.